Welcome to The Pursuit's group video lessons where we seek to know God, build relationships, and to make a difference. I hope your group takes advantage of the discussion guide that we provide linked in the description of this video in order to help your group during their time together. I don't know if you've ever shot a bow and an arrow, but today I want to talk to you about what it means to have your hands on the bow. And there's a story from 2 Kings chapter 13 where we read about the last days of Elisha. I had an opportunity to provide a message in our Sunday services in which this story from 2 Kings 13 provided a great opportunity to reflect on the obedience Elisha displayed with responsibility given from God throughout his life. And even through his obedience, we are able to see on display God's purpose and free will of man. Things are often left to the will of men, yet everything does come to pass in the end according to the will of God. Elisha was one of the great prophets of ancient Israel, and we've been studying his ministry for the last couple months, and in this passage we see when he was about to die. Even though he was a man of God who healed many others, he was about to die, and it was actually from an illness. And as his, uh, as his death drew closer, Joash, the king of Israel, who had done evil in the sight of the Lord, was worried. You see, Israel was a small nation that faced many enemies, just like today. And at that time, the biggest threat came from the Syrians. But King Joash somehow understood that the real strength of Israel wasn't in their armies, in their horsemen, or in their chariots. No, the real strength of Israel was in their close and faithful relationship with God. Prophets like Elisha kept that connection strong. So he was part of the strength of Israel, but Elisha was about to die, sending the king into a period of concern and worry. So at that moment, Elisha told him to take a bow and some arrows because what else would you expect, right? But through an illustration of arrows shot through the window, the prophet would show the king that the arrow of the Lord's deliverance was still present. All Joash had to do was shoot the arrow in faith. So King Joash began to do what the prophet had told him to do. And we can imagine the scene. Joash positioned himself in front of the window, faced the general direction of Syria. A servant brought the arrow and the, bows to, uh, the bow and the arrows to him, and Elisha told him to put your hand on the bow. Joash put the arrow in place and the bow and stood in front of the window. And as he did that, something unexpected probably happened. Elisha came up behind the king, and as Joash began to stretch the bow and draw back and prepare to shoot, Elisha put his hands on the king's hands. Like a father helping his child shoot the bow, the prophet would guide the hands of Joash. Now, I think this, this scene is amazing, and we can look at it in greater depth, but consider this part. The prophet's hands on the king's hands, drawing the arrow back on the bow and pointed it in the right direction. If you aren't strong enough to bend the bow for whatever God has in front of you or whatever he has for you to experience, then ask Jesus to fulfill the sense of this picture as is illustrated in this scene from 2 Kings 13. Ask Jesus, the ultimate prophet, priest, and king, ask Jesus to put his hands on your hands and to give you the strength and the skill to do what it is that he has you to do and to give you the skill to aim in the right direction. Too many times I have felt too weak to do the things that I should, but with his hands on mine, then just like the Apostle Paul said in Philippians chapter 4, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And in Jesus, we can pull that bow and shoot it in the way that we should. And when we seek his assistance, we can rest on several truths. It's his power, not ours. When we pick up our bow and arrow, there will be victory, not by our power, but by His. But many of us, when we are met with struggle, we set down the bow and arrows. Some of us has, have put His power down and tried to do the things on our own power. But don't give up because our power is never enough. It's His power, not ours. Likewise, it's His hands, not ours. Like Elisha, Jesus comforted that even, through, even though He may be gone, God's power will remain. And so what, it is, what is it that you're seeking in life? What breakthrough? What deliverance? 
Seek God's hands, his Holy Spirit, to rest on you like the hands of Elisha were on Joash. Place it in his control, be guided by him, and accept his instructions. Finally, it's his victory, not ours. We must rely on his victory and not ours. For Joash, shooting the arrow was having faith that God would deliver him the victory. See, if Joash had gone out into battle and won, he would have believed that it was on his own victory, on his own accord, not God's. God wanted Joash to know that it was because of him that he had victory. Because of his power, his hand, and firing the arrow, God would get the glory for the victory. Sometimes we are put in positions where we have to have faith that God will deliver us victory. Finances, marriage, family, mental health, we need his power, his hand, and his victory. I hope you find encouragement through this story that is representative of the struggles we face in life. Please discuss this with your group, what God is speaking to you through this message. Share your joys as well as your prayer requests with the rest of your group and take time to celebrate together. Get to know one another better and encourage one another to find ways to make a difference in the lives of others.